Hey folks, it's uh, the Serious JG trying to do one of them channel update type videos. Um, although, due to technical issues, I'm going to have to actually uh, I'm going to have to actually um, record the sound of my commentary on one computer and the Xbox up another, which means I have to do sound sync. So this is how I do sound sync. I start at social and I go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Now my music, I go whoosh, 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 and I can sync the sound. Isn't that great? There's better ways to do it, but the console makes things a pain in the butt. Anyway, um, I'm the Mysterious JG, and I made myself a little notepad file with things that I wanted to mention, so hopefully I won't be too rambly in this. And uh, if you're patient and you sit through, I'm going to play like one, maybe two matches at Rumble Roses Double X, because that's the traditional thing that I play while I'm doing the announcement video. And I have had people asking me to do an LP of that one. Um, I'm not going to do an LP of that game. <laughs> There's no story mode. Uh, somebody even commented recently. And actually, this is the only person who mentioned it recently. I'm acting like this is a nonstop call for this game. Occasionally, I get comments on the old Rumble Roses videos. But somebody recently said, I know ro Broken Record is broken, but I would like to see an LP of this game. You know, I love the game to death, but there's no story mode. And uh, I had a lot of fun making fun of the story mode in Rumble Roses. But I don't know that I could just make role play make something up if I did it would probably get creepy in a hurry anyway considering that the game is basically just non-stop sexual titillation so uh all right so let's let's go what do we got first first topic back in America yes I have returned from Afghanistan I came back uh on Christmas week I stopped off for like a day or two in the UK on the way back but basically um I was uh, went more or less straight from Afghanistan back home. And uh, while I was in Afghanistan on my R&Rs, I got to go home once, visit family, and that was when we recorded DW5 Empires, which um, I kind of forgot about because Bobo had been uploading stuff for me, and he took over uh, handling that. And um, I would send him seven zip files of videos I was able to record, and he would uh, log into my channel and actually uh, upload them and make them public. And then he handed the channel back over to me when I came back, and I kind of lost sight of the fact that, oh, there was like three more videos of DW5 Empires that were still ready to be posted. So uh, they'll be getting posted one at a time. There will actually be two left because I made one public before recording this video. Um, yeah, and on the second r, &R I went to the UK, had a great time there, did not run into any LPers, uh, at least that I know of. I mean, I might have been passing LPers left and right. There's a lot of LPers from the UK uh, as I was on the subway or whatever, or the underground, as they call it there. Uh, and sadly, uh, unlike the last time I was in the underground, um, many years ago, uh, I was uh, an undergraduate student because I'm old, and uh, I went to um, a semester in the UK, and at that time, there were posters and advertisements up in the London Underground for Dungeon Keeper 2, because Dungeon Keeper 2 was available in stores at that time. So that should give you an idea of how old I am, if you feel like researching it. Uh, but it was pretty awesome, because I didn't play Dungeon Keeper 2, but I saw from the posters, it was always a picture of Horny the Horned Demon um, and the Mistress. Because one of the geniuses at Bullfrog realized, hey, the Mistress is just one of many fun demon denizens in this game. But uh, as far as being something to put on a poster, it might grab people's attention more than, say, you know, an imp. So, yes, uh, they were heavily... A lot of uh, the Mistress showing up in the uh, adverts for that game. Adverts is what they call them in the UK. Uh, and Bullfrog is, of course, a British company. Uh, which I have always suspected because I saw them doing adverts in the UK and nowhere else. But I looked them up on... Um, I looked up Dungeon Keeper and read a little bit about it, and uh, it was confirmed, if you can trust Wikipedia, of course, that they're a UK company. What I didn't know about them is they also did Populous and some other stuff, uh, so that's cool. But anyway, um, and they are now part of the EA corporate empire, which just ruins everything, but whatever. Um, all right, so I, I, my, I was supposed to be talking about being back in America. I'm back in America. Uh, spent a week uh, with the parents and the family. Hanging out. Hanging out with the family. Having ourselves a party. And it was nice. And um, I got to have a much better Thanksgiving than I had last year at Azizula, Fob. Um, much better meal and all that. Uh, but now I'm back. And this is actually, the, this is, as I'm recording this on a Sunday. And I go back to work tomorrow. And I'm not particularly 
happy about that. But you know, it's not never. It was never actually going to be the plan that I was going to stop working when I came back from Afghanistan. Uh, you know, go to Afghanistan for 15 months and you'll never have to work again. The only way that was going to happen is if I went to Afghanistan and got like blown up or killed or whatever. Speaking of which, um, I have to remind myself sometimes not everybody who watches one or two of my videos has watched every video and read every comment and seen every question, but I do still have people asking me if I'm a soldier and wishing me all the best and blah, blah, occasionally. Just not, not often, but occasionally. And I'll have to let people know, no, I'm not a soldier. I was in Afghanistan. Uh, not as a contractor, but, um, you know, working as a civilian for the government. And uh, I was not in harm's way to the same extent that a soldier would be, but I was in harm's way to an extent just by virtue of being there. The, the base that I lived at for most of that time was attacked. The perimeter was breached one time. Uh, that base is most famous because it's the place where, um, I want to say Prince Harry, um, whichever prince is not married to Kate Middleton, but is... Uh, part of an Apache crew in the British military. He's stationed at the ba at the British um, section of the base. There's like a larger compound with a U.S. base, an ANA base, and a British base. And um, he's at the British base. He used to go to the British base to get pizza. Um, and that base got attacked once. And, um, you know, there's there a couple people did get killed. Uh, but, uh, you know, by and large, yeah, there's like, like of the population of that base, I think 0. 0.000 something percent got killed during the attack. But still, uh, for those guys, that's small comfort. But anyway, no, so when people occasionally are like, oh, you're so brave going out, I always feel kind of uncomfortable. But then every so often somebody will just, this doesn't happen often either. And I, I delete the comments when they come up. But I have had people comment on my YouTube videos and just start going off about America. And I'm like, no, I'm not really interested in hearing about this. This is my YouTube channel where I play video games. So those are the two extremes. People who just want to, like, pat me on the back because I was in Afghanistan. And I'm like, no, I wasn't, like, I'm not, like, infantry out there, you know, risking my life on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. But I also don't particularly want people coming back and being like, America sucks, I'll burn the flag, virtually speaking. Your LPs also suck because you aren't American. Yeah, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, way off topic already. I'm supposed to be talking about my channel here. I'm sorry. Let's get back to it. Uh, I started going off on all the R&Rs. Third R&R &R was in Japan, and that was an absolute blast, and that's where I got to pick up RTK-12, of course. Um, which I should... Ma oh, I don't have a note to talk about that, but... Um, yeah, RTK-12 and the potential of LPing that. Well... Let me come back to that in a little bit. Um, okay, so, yeah, back in America, and... Uh, back in America, and uh, it feels so good. I, as, Since I've gotten back, I eat a lot of my mother's home cooking. Like, mashed potatoes with gravy is pretty awesome, although she's got the whole family on a diet, so actually, um, <laughs> portions weren't as generous as I remembered, but that's fine. And um, I made sure to go out and get Pizza Hut. Uh, that's like the first meal that I bought while I was just on my own. I ordered like two pizzas worth of pizza and just put the leftovers in the fridge and had them the next day. I made the burritos that I used to make, which I enjoy. Uh, I have not yet gotten to Taco Bell. I have gotten to Burger King. I haven't gotten to Chipotle, but that was the weird thing. I make burritos for myself, but I also like Taco Bell and I also like Chipotle. So it was like, unless I wanted to eat Mexican food all day every day and uh, just get Montezuma's revenge in a big way, I had to kind of temper it. So I will still have to get back to Chipotle and Taco Bell before um, leaving the country again, uh, which is another topic that needs to be discussed, actually, the potential for departing the country again. Um, but no, back in America, and it's great, and I've been back for a couple of weeks now for anyone who's asking, and I can say, you know, you don't want to prejudge a country, you don't want to prejudge anything, but having lived in America for years, and having spent more than a year in Afghanistan... It's maybe not enough time to judge the whole country because I didn't visit every part of the country, but I think I can conclusively say I would prefer to live in America than in Afghanistan. Moving on. Now let's get down to the channel itself. Um, people do get irritated when you talk too much about stuff that has nothing to do with the channel on these things. Um, I just finished uh, Final Fantasy X. Actually, for me, I've been finished for weeks and weeks uh, because I, have to rec I had to record stuff and uh, send it to Bobo as zip files over a very slow network connection, as seven zip files. It takes forever to get anything to Bobo. So, um, as people probably noticed, and I know it wasn't ideal, but the LPs I was recording in Afghanistan, you guys weren't seeing them anything close to live, um, except for the ones like 
to a certain extent, Starflight kind of worked a little like that because the, small, the files were small, but no, it wasn't really very much live. But I just finished Final Fantasy X. It was, of course, my 1,000 subscriber special because it was my favorite RPG game ever, pretty much. Uh, even though it's like a... You know, I don't want to go into it. There was like a specific incident came up that always made me kind of sad where somebody um, was asked about my LP uh, of Final Fantasy X and they were like, they didn't want to watch it and like, uh, it was so sad. It's my favorite RPG, why won't you watch? But I actually got a pretty good response to it. I was a little bit afraid of LPing a Final Fantasy game because when I first started out, I was doing like Tecmo Secret of the Stars, Paladin's Quest, uh, the Breath of Fire games. I was going for RPGs that were really good, console RPGs from my youth, but kind of forgotten. And, um... Of course, there's no such thing as a forgotten Final Fantasy game. Even the games that didn't come out in America uh, tend to pop up in collections later, and people geek out over them and act like they remembered them from their childhood or whatever. I've had people make, you know, Final Fantasy smart comments where they reference the games that I never even played. Uh, I was had a back and forth with some commentator on whether it was Final Fantasy is always shocking you and throwing in these big, big plot twists and killing off characters that you thought were going to be main characters and last of the whole game. And I was like, they did that once. And they came back and quoted some stuff out of like the games that never even showed up in America. And I don't want to go into detailed discussion of that and why I still think I was right. But no, it's like the Final Fantasy games. you got to be careful. People know a lot about them. Um, you've got to be careful with spouting off Final Fantasy facts and turning out to be wrong. It's... You know, it's just one of those things people geek out on, much like, apparently, World War II history. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so I finished Final Fantasy, and I think that went fairly well, but um, now I have to pick what RPG to do next, because traditionally I've always, from the very beginning of days of my channel, when I alternated games, I never had more than one going at a time. Now that I have more than one game going at a time, most of the time, I've always got an RPG going. Uh, so, I'm thinking about well, I'm throwing it out there to you guys for comments, but I'm thinking about taking a break and just not playing an RPG for a little while. Throwing that one out there. There's people who wanted me to go straight to Final Fantasy X-2, uh, which is, actually, that idea does have a certain appeal, because I do intend to play that eventually. So I wonder, is there a point in just not getting going on it? Um, but I've always thought it would be fun to do Final Fantasy Tactics, possibly. Um, although... I'd already off-screen and built up a party and then had somebody comment, well, just don't have an over-leveled party because that makes the game so boring. And I'm like, ah, they're, damn it, they're right. Um, yeah, so there's Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, I've got the Breath of Fire... I've got Breath of Fire 3 and 4, uh, both working on an emulator that I could play. I've never played them before, so it would be like a blind LP, but I think I would allow myself to have a FAQ uh, on account of the fact that in Final uh, Breath of Fire 2 in particular, it's really easy to miss stuff and permanently miss it. And I like to try to make my LPs of RPGs pretty complete. I had people patting me on the back, and um, it felt pretty good. I, I really appreciated the, the comments I got uh, at the end of the Final Fantasy XLP, by the way. That really made me feel good. The feedback on that game was overwhelmingly positive, and I concentra- I sometimes like called out and make fun of the- and reference the negative comments, but they were actually outnumbered by the positive comments uh, for the most part there. And people really complimented the fact that it was a very complete LP, that I showed you just about everything. I did everything short of playing through the entire game twice so you could see both Wak, uh, Gata and Luzu at the end of the game. I wasn't going to do that, but I did just about everything else. Um, but yeah, so if I was going to do the Breath of Fire 3 or 4, I'd probably have a fact open as I played the game. And I'd maybe try to find a spoiler-free walkthrough if there was one um, so that I could still be surprised by plot events. But yeah, so I'm throwing those ideas out there. Breath of Fire 3, Breath of Fire 4, Final Fantasy X-2, Final Fantasy Tactics, and also Final Fantasy VIII. These are all ideas that I'm throwing out there. Uh, and another possibility is somebody mentioned uh, somebody mentioned Lost Odyssey once or twice, and I mentioned that I really didn't like that game very much. I loved it when I first started playing it because it, it had been a long time since I'd played a Japanese console RPG, uh, but I came to hate like all the characters and the story a lot. So it might be fun there because um, if people really like the Final Fantasy XLP where I was kind of... Um, some people hate this approach, but some people like it. I kind of did a Mystery Science Theater lives, like not really carefully prepared in advance, but I would just kind of interject my own comments and jokes during the plot scenes. Um, with Lost Odyssey, that would work, and it would have an even more negative, nasty, snarky tone because I just wouldn't actually legitimately like any of the characters. 
<laughs> Even though I found out the person who did the voice of Riku, who, as much as I hate Riku, is actually a really talented voice actress. She does one of the characters in Lost Odyssey. Hedy Burgess, who did Yuna, does not. So agree just Bass, you're okay to watch this one if I do it. But uh, that's a possibility. And the other one is um, I could do the... Whichever Final Fantasy game it was that's on PS3 and Xbox and had Lightning as the main character... Uh, because I do eventually want to play, I think that's 13, and I, I want to play 13-2 eventually, but I'd need to, if I ever wanted to LP it, I'd have to LP 13 first. So, uh, and I'll probably, I've got 13-2 uh, on my Christmas list, but I don't know when the heck I'd get a chance to play it. I never play games when I'm not LPing anymore. But anyway, RPG, uh, give me your thoughts and feedback. Tell me how awesome Final Fantasy X was in the comments. But, um... I really would like to hear what, what RPG people would like to see. I've even thought about doing Chrono Trigger. I mean, it's a ton of... Once I finally did a big RPG a lot of people had seen, and even though I'm sure there's a dozen or more Final Fantasy X RP, uh, LPs out there that have more viewers than mine does, I still enjoyed it, and I still got positive feedback. So I no longer have this feeling like I can't play a game that's already been widely LP'd. So, yeah, it opens up a ton of stuff. If you, if you really like to see me LP and Chrono Trigger, let me know. That might be fun. Chrono Cross would be fun, too. Um, I'd have to dig out the discs for that one. I suppose I could play that on an emulator. But anyway, moving on. Too much talk about that. Dynasty Warriors 7. I uh, already put out the Christmas preview vid. You guys have seen that. Uh, it seems like in general uh, people are happy about this and anybody who isn't is being polite enough not to you know, be a spoil sport about it. There's one little issue with Dynasty Warriors 7. Uh, I processed the first... I don't want to turn anyone off of giving this LP a chance and watching it, but I processed the first videos, and I thought they looked horrible. I thought the quality of the visuals was horrible. Then I went back and looked at... I was, like, wondering if I did something wrong, and I was really worried about it, because Bobo and I had recorded... We had two lengthy sit-down sessions of it, and I confirmed that the video had captured, but I didn't really go in and try to process the finalized videos. So when the video quality came out, uh, subpar. I was really surprised because generally I either something happens and I get a crash and I don't get the video at all or the video looks fine. So we had like seven hours of this thing recorded and I suddenly like, what the hell? We got seven hours of stuff that looks like crap uh, where our commentary is as hilarious, witty, and urbane as ever, but the video's okay. Then I went back and looked. Actually, it looks exactly the same quality. Um, well, I mean, you guys can be the judge. I went back and looked, and it's pretty comparable quality to what DW7 uh, looked like with the Way story mode and the Wu story mode. And I think the problem is I'm comparing it in my mind to what Final Fantasy X looked like, because Final Fantasy X, I thought, came out looking pretty gorgeous. Um, I had a couple of complaints, or really one guy complained like more than one time, about the frame rate and how it didn't look as good as it should and how it was ruining the LP for him in the first few videos and then that same person came turned around and said wow it's really improved I don't know what you did but it looks a million times better in a later video and I was like I didn't do anything I'm not really sure what's going on if I change the setting in the emulator or it might be that Camtasia installed an update more or less automatically and, and fixed some issue but yeah um, the problem is when I'm recording off a console I have to use this capture device called a Dazzle that it's not high def, and it just doesn't look as good. And I tried to go in, and for some reason, DW7 doesn't seem to want to be full screen. Uh, and when I go in and use the Camtasia to crop to only the part of the image that you'd want to see and crop out the black borders and then burst, boost that up to fill the whole screen, it looks horrible. So I can't do that. Um, and I didn't do that on Wu or Wei, so I'm not going to do it on Shu either. Um, but yeah, DW7, I'm like, please make, please post lots of happy, positive comments about DW7, because I'm already kind of apprehensive, and I think it's just because now I have higher standards for what these things look like than I did when I last recorded the game, so, uh, and it's Christmas, so I'm not going to buy anything for myself right now, but if I haven't gotten, uh, if over the course of Christmas, no technology shows up under the tree from Santa to help me with my LP recording, I might go drop a couple of bucks on a capture card, um, because Bobo has, Bobo does better quality uh, captures off consoles than I do. He used to, and now he's having trouble with that. But I need to confer with him and figure it out, because this Dazzle device I got, it's not very expensive, uh, but the same model is on the shelf at Best Buy that was on the shelf when I bought it over a year ago, and there's no kind of update or upgrade that I'm aware of. Upgrade complete. So it's just kind of like, yeah, years passed. I dropped money. I got a much better computer, but the videos, if they come off a console, look just as bad as they did on my older computer. 
the one I used to record wet. Now, in fairness, the laptop I used to use to record was... I had to find creative ways to make interesting and amusing title cards to insert any time frames were dropped and I needed to expand the video to be the same length as the soundtrack, but at least I don't have to do that anymore. Okay, so DW7. Uh, Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas is currently the least watched LP on my channel, and there's a perfectly good reason why. It's because I recorded hours of Fallout New Vegas and didn't post any of it before I went to Afghanistan, and then I get left it all on a hard drive for Bobo, and I was like, please post one of these a week the entire time I'm gone, because if I can't record while I'm over there, that way, when I come back after a year, maybe I won't have lost all of my viewers, because uh, I'll have at least had, a, once a week, a little half-hour video from JG that people could watch to remember I exist. So, people picked up very quickly, and I was open about the fact that, no, you're not watching this, quote, live. All of this was recorded. The, the farther we get along in this LP, the uh, farther and farther removed we are from when it was actually recorded. So nobody could... I mean, it was hard for people to make comments and, and try to tell me, you should do this, you should do that. And I think as people realized that, they stopped watching. So uh, the LP is not complete, and we've now hit the point where everything that was recorded before I went to Afghanistan has posted. Uh, so I'm going to pick it back up again. I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to do that. I'm probably not going to post a new Fallout video, a new Vegas video, anytime really soon. But I have every intention of getting back to it, because it was, I was having a lot of fun with the game back when I was recording it. And, uh, yeah. Biggest problem with Fallout New Vegas is it is the first time I got really slammed with copyright messages. I always do this as a possibility, and I'm afraid to, even if the copyright claim appears to be bogus, like it's some gaming uh, website that goes around claiming copyright claims so that they can get ads for their website or something, I'm still afraid to fight them because... Um, I don't know exactly how far you have to push it before YouTube just, you know, um, deletes your ca your account. I mean, I'm aware of people who post TV shows and get their accounts wiped out, and I think that's a little different from LPing, but legally it probably isn't. I don't know if fair use applies. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't really feel like getting into the legalisms of this in too much depth, but... Um, that's another thing I want to mention. If you see an ad on one of my videos, I, I get irritated when I see ads on LPs. It really does bother me. Um, if an LP -er has lots and lots of viewers, I guess I don't mind them trying to make some money off of it, especially if they're putting a ton of time into it. But it really, really bugs me. Uh, it, it just... It, it, it's just something about my personality. It's like I can't get angry at or blame someone for trying to make money off of it, but it really undercuts my enjoyment if I have to sit through an ad because I'm like, you're, uh, you're like you're just some some dude like me playing games, and I, you know, and you're gonna sit here and try. I don't know. It just does. And then, like you got you got like Grim Grams has the tier collection fund. Like that was practically forced on him, and I think it's I think the way he handles it is really cool, which is he never draws attention to it, but it's there. Kakoski was always the same way. I think you can donate to his channel. I don't know how long it's been that way. At some point, I was made aware of the fact that you could donate to it. I haven't myself because it's been a long time since I actually watched it. But I've never. Maybe he does it all the time now, but I don't. I do not remember him ever pimping for donations. And Grimith doesn't do this that either. If you ever see an ad on my channel, folks, it is because there was some kind of copyright claim. And YouTube put an ad on my channel. And sometimes I think it's absolutely bogus. Certainly, like the um, the, DW, the the Christmas preview, DW7 has ads on it that obviously have nothing to do with the Chinese television station that produced it. So I don't know if the Chinese television station gets revenue from YouTube. I, I don't understand how ads on YouTube work. Like... Um, I don't get it. Does the Chinese television station that produced that TV show that I was using images from, footage from, in that preview video, are they getting reimbursed somehow by Dove Detergent if Dove Detergent runs an ad? Maybe they are. I don't really know. But, yeah, if you see an ad on my channel, it is because of copyright. I absolutely promise you it is not because I'm collecting money. Uh, but anyway, so Fallout New Vegas... Um, why did I go off on that tangent? Because I had copyright issues with Fallout New Vegas because of the music. Uh, had some 
copyright issues on videos where the Fallout title screen appears. And I was chastised by people. It's like, how am I going to learn this without making the mistake once? People were calling me an idiot because I didn't edit that out. And all the LPRs who know what they're doing edit out or don't record the title screen because that's how YouTube flags at your copyright. And so like, to me, it's like, all right, now you're just actively you know you're breaking copyright law. And I know that what I'm doing isn't strictly legal, but I'm not making money off it. I'm just having fun. I'm not set out setting out to hurt anybody. But it's like, yeah, I know this stuff's copyrighted. As far as I'm aware, it's probably fair use to show it. Certainly if the game's old enough that it's not a new release, I figure I'm okay, whatever. If I get a cease and desist, I will absolutely drop an LP. But people were like, oh, you got to cut out the title screens. Even if you do that, the big thing was the country station, for some reason, wasn't a big problem. But the... Um, you pick up that Mr. Vegas station where they play actual, like, Vegas show tunes type music, and, uh, you know, you got your, like, Rat Pack, Sinatra type of stuff, or I don't even know if Sinatra's actually on that soundtrack, but you've got that, that, that style of music on there. That stuff is already getting flagged, and the videos were made, uh, not just ads put on videos and they're still there, but the videos were absolutely removed, so I had to take one and strip the soundtrack off of the video, and I managed, I was lucky enough, I still had the raw commentary file without the game sound, so I put that on there, and I've got one video that's kind of weird like that, you can't hear the game, you can just hear me, uh, and that seemed to beat the copyright, but from now on when I play, I'm going to have to turn off the radio, and that sucks because I love having the radio on. Uh, I don't know if this is what's preventing me from having more subscribers or if it's what's giving me the subscribers I do have, but I always tend to sing along with the radio, goof around, change the lyrics, you know, Johnny Switchblade Action Adventure Punk. Yeah, I love that. That's part of for the fun of the game for me, and that's gone. Oh, but I'm still going to play Final Fallout Fall New Vegas. I hope you guys watch and enjoy. I will certainly try to post at a faster rate than one video a week like it was getting when I was in Afghanistan and above all else if you guys give me comments please don't spoil the game for me because I'm playing it blind but if you guys make suggestions I will actually be able to hear them and respond that'll be a big shift for that LP moving on boy this video is going to be like three hours at this rate okay Mass Effect I really want an LP Mass Effect I want an LP Mass Effect so much Mass Effect, as you can see, um, I don't know why that's popping up. Uh, my games. It was. Uh, I was looking at some point at my achievements, the Xbox achievements. What a soul and life sucking thing it can be if you get hooked on getting Xbox achievements, because you can really waste a lot of time trying to earn those. Uh, but Mass Effect, I did not realize this, has an invisible thing going where when you get Xbox achievements, oh, this is where the duh, they're right here. When you get Xbox achievements, it actually, um, they actually uh, affect the game. I didn't realize this. So, for example, uh, I've got all, I got a, all of the achievements for Mass Effect. I played the shit out of this game when it first came out. And when you get, um, when you get Singularity Mastery, that means uh, that when you start a new playthrough, you start a new character, you will have bonus skill slot. You can add a skill, more skills than your starting character would normally have, and you can use uh, Singularity. So, like, that, this set of uh, achievements, they unlock skills in future playthroughs, and you'll be the laughing stock of future peoples. Other stuff, like, um, I think the... The Geth Hunter achievement, when you kill a certain number of Geths, boosts your shield. Dog of War, and you kill organics, I think that boosts your life, whatever. The point is, I have all the Mass Effect achievements because I played the shit out of it, and I really want to play that game. So why aren't I LPing it? Well, there's a couple of issues. One thing, I think when I came back to America, there was about a million games that I really want to LP right now, this second, and I can't LP them all, and if I buy it off more than I can chew, I'm not going to be able to pay attention to the LPs I'm running, and it's going to suck. And how am I ever going to finish Fallout New Vegas if I have an LP at Mass Effect going when they're both kind of first-slash-over-the-shoulder RPG shooters? I'll never finish them both. I'll trade off, or one of them will get neglected. I don't know. And the other thing is, as I mentioned, talk about DW7, I'm really not happy with uh, my console recording setup. Uh, Final Fantasy X broke it for me. I, I recorded that on an emulator on the computer, and I was able to take advantage of all of Camtasia 8's, like, absolutely maxed out what it could do as far as crisp quality of visuals, and that emulator as far as putting out an output that's identical, more or less, other than obviously the goofy-ass graphical glitch where Jack, uh, you know, Broska's final Aeon is facing away from you during the big boss battle, but 
you know, perfectly emulating the look of the game, capturing it with like crisp clarity, beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful. I loved it. And now when I get crappy non high def recordings off of the um <laughs> of the console, I can't take it anymore. I've been I've been spoiled. As far as I can make out, DW7 looks fine if you watch it in YouTube, uh, just on a little little window. But if you try to full screen it, or if you try to download it, this is what I was having to do to watch other people's LPs from Afghanistan. If you try to copy it to your hard drive and then watch it in a viewer later, um, it just doesn't look good. Uh, so Mass Effect, folks. Let me know whether you think it's a good idea. I Again, this is a game I'm sure it's been LP'd a million times. But I would love to play this one. I would have so much fun with it. I'm always quoting Commander Shepard. It's like, it seems like all Bobo and I do is throw references and video games back and forth at each other sometimes. But he's never even played Mass Effect. And I'll still throw out stuff in a Shepard voice and he gets it. So... I would love to do Mass Effect. If you would like to see Mass Effect, let me know. More people who encourage me to do it, the more likely I am to get it going soon. But probably, I made myself not record any until, you know, I made myself not start recording it yet because I want to see if I can get a better ca- console capture set up because I'm going to play it on the Xbox. Um, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, deal with Metal Gear Solid is... Um, and I probably shouldn't be talking about this because this involves Bobo too, but um, we had talked about doing the Metal Gear series collaboratively. Like between the two channels, we we're going to hit all the games. I'd even talked about the idea of doing a Let's Play together, even though it's one player game on uh, Mass uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, so Bobo went ahead and did Metal Gear on the NES. I did Snake's Revenge on the NES. Neither of us have the capacity, uh, unless it's maybe it's. Oh, I have to ask Bobo. Uh, I got him for Christmas last year the PS3. He has a PS3. I have an Xbox 360. I got him the PS3 Metal Gear High Def Collection. Uh, and if I recall, the souped-up uh, version of one of the Metal Gear games had um, Metal Gear Solid Snake translated into English. That was the Japanese PC-only Metal Gear sequel from Kojima. And in Konami, uh, I don't know if... I think it came before... I think it came after Snake's Revenge. Uh, and, you know, Snake's Revenge is, of course, not canon. It wasn't made by Konami. Uh, but when he found out that it was popular enough they were making a sequel without him, he went ahead and was like, well, screw you guys. I'm going to make a sequel that ignores what happened in your sequel, and I'm only going to put it out on this uh, Japanese home console, the MCX, or as a home PC. So maybe one of us actually could play that. Maybe I'll talk to him about doing that. But um, because I think it was it was a, an extra on the PS on the PS2, um, Metal Gear Snake Eater add-on thing. Because both of them had like an extreme legends. Uh, Metal Gear, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, Guns of the, or, uh, Sons of Liberty had a VR missions. It was a separate game. You could play it separately from uh, Metal Gear Solid, but. And actually, I don't even think there was a remix option where, where loading the two of them and the machine did anything. It just took the game engine from Metal Gear 2. And it's like, you guys want more? Here, here's some more virtual missions and Snake Tales where they have some made-up non-canon missions where Solid Snake is fighting on the big rig or the big shell. Blah, blah, blah. You either know what I'm talking about or you don't. And I think the Extreme Legends for... They came out with an Extreme Legends version of um, Metal Gear solid three snake eater which featured an online game no longer supported which i kind of always wish i'd gotten a chance to play it because i found out after it was already gone that konami had made uh reiko hinamoto and rowdy reiko from uh rumble roses double x playable <laughs> it was like some special thing you had to do you couldn't just play as them all the time but um you could play you could potentially play as them in the online and um as ridiculous as she is, Rowdy Reiko with a machine gun was a lot more plausible to me than Reiko Hinamoto with a machine gun. Anyway, um, yeah, so Metal Gear Solid is a possibility on the horizon, but we talked about it and we decided there's just no way that we could do a Let's Play together even though it's a one-player game. As much fun as that would be, I think we'd have more fun doing that than either one of us would have LPing the game separately, probably, but we don't have enough time to get together an LP. Uh, we live like It's like an hour drive between where we live, so... I I was kind of pushing the idea, and Boba pointed out it's going to take us like a year to get through, even the first game, because of how you know it's it's difficult enough for us to get together. Like it it would take months to do each game, and we would be at it for years. So, Metal Gear Solid, folks, um, throw out your comments on how much you'd like to see that, because that remains a possibility that is not definite. 
although at the moment um, yeah one of us would have to pick up Metal Gear Solid and get that rolling uh, okay next thing to discuss Allied General uh, this, one person asked me about Allied General on the uh, on a StarCraft video, and that kind of ticked me off. I, I, I'm too easy to irritate with these comments. I, I allow these comments on these videos to irritate me, but I've got a brand new LP going that I'm really hoping people will take an interest in, and somebody freaking shows up and asks me about Allied General, which I clearly, in the Panzer General videos, had said, there would be huge technical issues with doing it. I'd really like to do it. I intend to do it. But there would be big technical issues with getting it to work because I can't run the game on Windows 95. I'd have to use the free version, the freeware version that somebody came up with. And I, because of the fact that I care about these things, I would have to go in and um, use Media Player to play the media files and the movies and briefings and stuff and blah, blah. And the screen's not going to look good and I can't do this and that and blah, blah. But I'm going to try to do it eventually. And then, like... Very shortly after that video, I mean, it's it's less than a week, and somebody's on other on my new LP that has nothing to do with Panzer General. I spell Allied General. Well, the update with Allied General is, um, I mean, it's now notorious amongst my fans how irritated I got by the Panzer General fans. <laughs> I, I that sounds so ungrateful. I'm glad that people watched the LP and were into it enough to comment, but you know, I mean, I've. It's like a, ga a running gag now. Any LP where I do something wrong, you comment and you say, you should have built artillery because of this one guy who just went off on me when he suggested I build artillery, and I came back and said, I know, but at the same time, somebody else suggested exactly the opposite, and I just got to play it my way at this point because I've got too much conflicting advice. The guy went off on me. and um, So now it's like a running joke. <laughs> that, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm playing Final Fantasy X, and oh, I didn't equip anti-petrify, and then Dark Bahamut, I didn't realize he had an attack all petrify status attack, so I lose the battle. This didn't, this specifically didn't happen, but an appropriate response would have been, you should have used artillery to defeat Bahamut. Anyway, and then you do a Commander Shepard voice, you should have used artillery to defeat Bahamut. Have you ever thought about helping the Krogan? Whatever. Um, yeah, so the deal with Allied General is, if I try to do it with my current capabilities, it would involve using PG forever, and it wouldn't look very good. Um, I found out that there was a... Nobody told me this. All these people asking me to play Allied General, none of them researched or looked into how it might be possible. Nobody told me there was a PS1 version of Allied General. They ported it to the PS1. I downloaded an ISO of that. And, yeah, technically I shouldn't be saying that because I never owned the PS1 version, so it's illegal. But I did own the PC version, so I kind of feel like I'm okay. And I downloaded an ISO of that, and I tried to play it on my PS2, on my PS1 emulator, and it's glitched out. It's weird. It doesn't work. There's this horrible sound glitch, and I'm assuming it has to do with the emulator, and I haven't bothered to try another emulator. I have uh, done some research into what it would cost to get an actual copy of Allied General for the PS1 to play on uh, my PS2. But I don't know if it's going to have backwards compatibility issues. I don't know if the game itself is just glitchy and weird. And just from playing around with it on the PS1 emulator, I know that the controls frustrated the crap out of me. The issues I had that make it unplayable for LP purposes were sound-related. But you could kill the sound and play the game. And I, it was a game I played with a mouse and a keyboard for, for years and years and years. And suddenly I'm trying to play it with a game controller. And it's really not a game that lends itself to that. It was just... So, there are now two, three possibilities if you count getting a new PS1 emulator, but there's really two possibilities for how I could Let's Play Allied General, and they would both be really frustrating to me and difficult to do. So, the answer to am I going to play it eventually is still, I'd like to. We'll see. Next topic. Uh, Starflight and StarCraft. I... <laughs> I just keep doing it. I did not intend to trick anyone into thinking Starflight videos were StarCraft videos or vice versa. I had always kind of been planning to LP StarCraft. Uh, Bobo and I had kicked around the idea of, hey, what if we donated money uh, on Grimoth's uh, Reward the Rewarders and make him LP StarCraft? Because we'd both like to see a good LP of StarCraft. And he's mentioned he likes the game. And then I was like, fuck that. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> decided to uh, LP it for myself. And I've opened myself up, I know, to lots of comments from people who are better at StarCraft than I am, or think they are. And there's plenty of both. There's a, a subset of people who think they're better than I am at StarCraft actually are. 
probably most of the people who think they're better at StarCraft than I am are better at StarCraft than I am. But there's going to be a subset who think they're better at StarCraft than I am and actually aren't. But both of those groups are going to, you know, and I say this now, and if nobody ever criticizes my StarCraft play, all it'll mean to me is that nobody's watching the damn LP, but <laughs> I'm opening myself up to much, a lot of Panzer General style. Why aren't you using Goliaths? Why are you using... Why are you using Goliaths? They're the worst ever. Why aren't you using Goliaths? They're the best ever. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying. But, no, I never had any intention of confusing people. But I have confused... And now on the Starflight videos, I've started saying StarCraft like not just putting it in the description but saying it and the starcraft videos i've started saying starflight it's not a joke where i'm trying to confuse people i just really don't know what the hell i'm talking about um so starcraft i have every intention to the best of my ability of playing all the way through starcraft story mode and brood war and um i'll probably go chug right along and play starcraft 2 then uh depends on how well starcraft goes i am already dreading the last zerg mission of brood war and i've got Dozens of missions, dozens upon dozens of missions before I get to that. And I'm already dreading it, because it's the one mission, no matter how much I save before taking any risky attack and then load after it fails, uh, anything like that, no matter how much of that kind of stuff I do, when I have nobody looking over my shoulder, no pressure to actually play the game fair, I've never ever beaten that without a cheat code. The only reason I've even seen the Brood War ending cinematic is because I put in the uh, the cheat code for automatic victory just because I wanted to see it. Never beaten that. And the mission right before that one, God, it must have taken me three hours of, of play to beat that thing. Um, if you actually, all the f false starts where I saved, did something, changed my mind and loaded, if you removed them, probably still over an hour. So... <laughs> Starcraft's going to get really hairy before it's over, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good LP. Starflight, I'm uh, I'm recorded a little bit ahead of what you guys have been able to see, not much, and I'm already getting separation anxiety because Starflight Trade Routes of the Cloud Nebula is it. There was a uh, they somebody was developing a Starflight three. Then there was an issue with them securing the rights, and they had to change the name. I've never played the game before. I could go out and try to find it, but everything I've read about says it was a pretty significant departure from Starflight, anyway. Um, so it would be like it would be like it's kind of like raising you know your your child dies horribly, and Abraham Lincoln's Abraham Lincoln's child is killed by vampires, and vampires have the power to bring them back, and Mary Todd wants them to bring back the baby. But Abraham Lincoln knows that it wouldn't be their baby anymore. It'd be some horrible freak. That's how I'd feel about it. I'd be desperately trying to bring Starflight back from the dead, but I would be coming up with some abomination. <laughs> I'm sure the game's actually fine, but whatever. Uh, and there's been various fan projects over the years trying to make a sequel to Starflight, but that never quite worked out. Um, speaking of fan projects, um, somebody pointed out to me, and I didn't know this existed, there's a fan-driven effort to make a third Dungeon Keeper game. Uh, I tried to download the demo. It didn't work. I'm not sure why, and I haven't gone back and revisited it. But um, bully to them for trying. I hope things go well. Uh, the biggest effect of finding out about that is that it reminded me of Dungeon Keeper, which I hadn't been thinking about, and it cost me to put Dungeon Keeper three, or sorry, Dungeon Keeper one Gold Edition uh, on my Christmas list. Even though I'm not absolutely 100% positive, I'll be able to play it on Windows 7. I found a web page that says it should be possible. If I end up getting Dungeon Keeper Gold Edition, the Deep Dungeons, um, I will certainly LP that, uh, despite the fact that, as much as I enjoyed Dungeon Keeper 2, it wasn't setting the world on fire with my viewing figures there, but I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, next item I've got, and we're almost done here, folks, <laughs> is uh, RTK12 slash Nobunaga. Um, RTK12, I did a video of that. Um, when I acquired it in Japan, I have yet to figure out if I'm, I, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong with the patches and, and not everything is actually being applied or if the patch just isn't as complete as I'd like it to be, but, um, officer names, the commands, all that's fairly well translated. Certainly, if you can't tell what it is, it's because, uh, of issues with the Japanese language, um, 
the visual symbols, the characters, carry a lot more meaning than the characters in English do. Characters in English tend to represent a sound, and characters in uh, Japanese usually represent entire syllables. So when you're learning with Rosetta Stone or whatnot, Japanese, uh, learning the reading and writing is way harder than learning the speaking, and I couldn't even learn to speak it. But uh, like a single Japanese symbol, will they will show you what it means, and it'll be like three or four letters long in, in English. So there's huge problems with this guy. They have to use a lot of abbreviations. That's why Paladin's Quest is so screwed up in English, uh, because something that has four characters in Japanese might take 12 characters to write out in English, uh, but the way these patches work, they're restricted to using four characters or whatever. So it gets really really tough uh, like that. But the big problem is that the explanatory text hasn't been uh, hasn't been translated. So all the game menu options have been explained, but that, that opening spiel in any scenario where your strategist tells you what's going on and also how to play the game, none of that's translated. So uh, if I tried to play RTK12 as a Let's Play, I haven't even played through an entire game of it yet. A, I I know how to raise troops. I don't know how to use tactics. I don't know. I really don't understand what you're supposed to do during a battle other than throwing your troops head on at the enemy. And if you've got more than they do, you should win. And if your officers have better stats, they're probably doing more damage per attack. And blah blah blah. And uh, from what I understand, people have complained that the, that may be just how the game is. There really isn't that much strategy. It's just a numbers game. People. Although, really, the only English language feedback I've seen on the game has been people responding to my video, but they've, they've compared it to a Facebook game. They say it's a travesty, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I also did... Um, my LP got mentioned. Uh, not that I'm, I'm not pimping myself here, really, but my LP got mentioned. Somebody brought it to the attention of the guy who made the, pa the, the patch on the um, Scholars of... whatever it's called. I, I can never remember the name, but the Kongming.net forums. Somebody actually told this person and gave them a link, and I have no idea whether or not they went and viewed it, but they basically were apologizing for me because I, I kind of acted like an ass in that video, and was like, thank you so much, you guys, for making this, and then I proceeded to spend, like, 45 minutes bitching about how everything wasn't translated perfectly, so, uh, if you're out there, buddy, watching this, I'm sorry, but, um, you know, I know that you're not getting paid for your work. It really would be cool if I could get translations of those, uh, pre-scenario uh, briefings, uh, like the start of scenario briefings where they explain the game, though, that would help a lot. Nobunaga's Ambition. I've uh, been asked if I want to LP that, and I finally played the game. Uh, Nobunaga's Ambition Iron Triangle, I mean, which is the last Nobunaga's Ambition game to come out, as far as I'm aware. Uh, it was a PS2 game. I played it on an emulator. Um, I figured I bought enough Koei games over the years that I was okay emulating that game and playing through it once, because I don't even know where I would go get it. I guess I could buy a new copy on Amazon. It's uh, not really available in, in stores, obviously at this point. Um, and I played with it a bit, and I, I don't think so. Uh, maybe, eventually, but it would take forever. It would take just as long as an RTK LP would. I don't know as much about the historical figures in the game, so I wouldn't be able to make as many wacky jokes, and I don't think it would be as amusing when I say stuff that's wrong, because I wouldn't even have a little bit of correct truth in it to then be wrong in amusing ways, where people will come in and know more, but it's like, oh, JG, you don't know anything. And um, as I go off on in the DW7 shoes, um, Muso, at the beginning, when that comes out at Christmas, you'll find out that, yeah, somebody somebody told me to die of AIDS because uh, I said that Guan Yu defeated Cao Cao at Chirby. But I was kidding because I was commenting on something that was happening in a video where it was Di Dynasty Warriors style. Guan Yu like stamps the ground and huge explosions of power appear and I was like and that's how he killed Cao Cao or Chirbi which obviously didn't happen and a guy comes up and tells me I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about and I argue back and I'm like I'm joking what's wrong with you and it turns into him telling me to die of AIDS because that's it, that's how the interwebs work yeah but Nobunaga's ambition yeah I don't know it's just I had a lot of fun with it actually playing it but uh, it was it was once you've like the hardest part of the game is at the very beginning taking over one or two territories uh, from your neighbors um, but once you've got two or three territories under your belt, uh, you're just steamrolling over smaller forces for you. It's it's it has the longest end game phase of any game I've ever played, and I didn't actually finish. I got to the point where I controlled uh, about half, maybe two thirds of Honshu, uh, and then I was just starting to land on like uh, those other what are they, uh, Shikoku and. I don't even remember the names of the islands, but um, Hokkaido is not really big in the game. Uh, 
Yeah, but I got to the point where I controlled most of Honshu, and none of the clans that were left controlled... Like, like the I got to the point where my army, because I was building more barracks than anyone else, I, I'd figured out by looking at somebody's game facts fact that how many barracks you got you could build before they stopped really benefiting you at all. And um, I got to a point where I had f smaller gold and food reserves than anyone else, because I was the only one doing anything. Everyone else was just piling up resources and not building troops, and I was just... It was going to take forever, and I let the computer autoplay through to the end and won, and it was fine, but... um. Yeah, for LP purposes, it might be fun to LP, like, to the point where I take over five territories. Like, once I'm the biggest force in Japan, just stop. Because it would be a 150-video uh, LP where it would the results would be a foregone conclusion by the end of video 30. And the only question would be, can the computer forces hold JG off long enough for Nobunaga to die of old age? That would be the only question. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of Nobunaga, I tried to LP from Afghanistan on my PC just for funsies because uh, I'd gotten a hold of a PC copy of Samurai Warriors 2. Um, not entirely legal copy. And uh, I just kept... It just kept... <sighs> It was like two or three times in a row where Camtasia lost the video, and I just got frustrated and gave up. But I'm still thinking about LPing his uh, Nobunaga Oda's story mode, because even though I already did Mitsuhide Akechi's, and that was the only one I really intended to do, I realized as I was playing around with it, Nobunaga has some awesome lines in his story mode that don't pop up in Mitsuhide or anybody else's story mode. You have to be playing as Nobunaga for them to happen, I think. And yeah, awesome lines are awesome. Next subject, Christmas. I don't know that I have anything to say here. I um, kind of mentioned some of it in passing. DW7 is coming out on Christmas, uh, the shoe story mode. I've already talked about how, you know, please be gentle because I'm planning to try to upgrade my console capture hardware soon. But for right now, I'm using the same technology I had over a year ago. Uh, so it's not going to look as crisp and nice as Final Fantasy X did. Uh, and I hope I'm not overselling that. A, I hope I'm not overselling that so people who would have enjoyed the LP now can't because they're convinced it's going to look like crap. And B, I um, hope that I'm not underselling it. And when you guys see it, you're like, holy shit, it's worse than he even said. This looks like garbage. Yeah, but uh, the plan right now is uh, to have all of DW7 uploaded and sitting on my channel uh, listed as private and then to make the entire LP go public uh, on Christmas, which means that on Christmas Day, you'll have like hours and hours of footage drop on, dropped on you. Um, so yeah, that's the plan, but I might back off on that because I think, um, uh, my first Christmas special was to drop all the Rumble Roses heel story modes on one day because I'd, you know, one video at a time, you know, a couple of videos a week had, uh, had played through all of the baby face story modes in Rumble Roses and then I dropped all the heel ones all at once and I, they still have never come even close to the views of the baby face ones. I think it's just, uh. And people like to watch things as they come out and feel like they're part of it as it's happening. And um, I never got this because when I started watching LPs, uh, it was all stuff that was already recorded and I would watch it at my own pace and enjoy it. Uh, that's how I used to watch Kikoski's LPs when I first started watching LPs. I think the first LP I ever watched as it came, like there's a couple of Kikoski really short ones that I watched as they came out. The first LP of any length I watched as it came out was um, Grimgram's RTK4, and as much as I enjoyed it, it was kind of like there were they, other people would get so excited when he, oh, you blew up my subscription box. This is what I always wanted. I'd always be like, damn it, I don't, ah, I'm gonna fall behind on this now. It's gonna, it's gonna be tough to watch all of this. I have other things I was gonna do. I did want to watch it though. Holy crap! So. Yeah, people like watching them uh, as they come out and being able to comment and give feedback. You're not going to be able to do that on DW7 because we're going to record the whole thing. But um, I hope you watch it and enjoy it anyway. Um, my Christmas list, um, none of you guys can buy me things for Christmas. The only person watching this who could buy me something for Christmas and is uh, actually obligated to is Bobo. Um, nobody else can be able to buy me anything for Christmas because none of you guys know my real name. Um, actually, there is one guy who might be watching this who does know my real name uh, now that I think about it. Um, via a PayPal transaction, but I'm not expecting, um, I was not expecting you guys to be able to buy me anything for Christmas, uh, but I'll tell you my Christmas list anyway, just in case anybody's interested, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just blogging about bullshit here, I'm gonna, I don't do this that often, so I, I think I'm okay, but, um, video game wise, I got Mass Effect 3, because I haven't played Mass Effect 3 yet, and I meant to mention this during Mass Effect, uh, talk, if I LP that game, 
or even before I LP that game, if you post spoilers from Mass Effect 3 on my channel, I'm going to delete them, ban you, and then I'm going to find you and kick your ass. Do not spoil Mass Effect 3. I played through 1 and 2. 3 came out while I was in Afghanistan, and while I intend to LP my way through the first two games probably before I ever play 3, I might not. I might not be able to. I might come to the conclusion that I need to play 3 first, because otherwise some asshole is going to spoil it. Um... Yeah, what else is on my Christmas list? Final Fantasy, I think it's 13-2, maybe it's 14. It's the sequel to the one about Lightning and her friends, and apparently this is about Lightning's little sister and some Bashonen guy, and they run around. And I've been told that if you really liked Lightning, and Lightning was okay, I suppose. She's my favorite character in the game, but didn't have that many characters I liked. But um, if you liked Lightning, well... And you think that because Lightning's shown on the cover art, you're going to have another game with Lightning, and it's going to be like Final Fantasy X2, Lightning fan service. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you're going to be out of luck because Lightning's barely in the game. So it's actually the game about Lightning's little sister. Whoopee. But that's on my list. Um, I think I put the Metal Gear hard... Uh, high def collection on my list even though uh, I already bought it for Bobo for the PS3 I picked up the Xbox version or no I put it on my list and might pick it up for myself if it doesn't get bought I haven't decided uh, even though I've heard uh, the reason I do it is for LPing purposes but I've heard that uh, in um, Sons of Liberty in particular it really didn't translate well to the Xbox because um, the Xbox or the PS2 buttons used to be pressure sensitive you could lightly hold the button for one thing and press it all the way and get something else and the Xbox buttons aren't like that and apparently when programming the game nobody took that into account so it's like the things that you're supposed to lightly touch to do on the ps2 you can't do it all in the xbox version whatever uh and i'll probably put a capture device of some kind onto my list at some point and it's other than that it's like audio visual stuff you don't care about i put the carl pilkington idiot abroad thing on my list because i liked the ricky gervais show so we'll see if anybody gets me that or whatever uh, I think there's some old Doctor Who stuff on there, but that's been on that list for forever now. I used to get the audios to listen to during when I had a really long commute, which I don't have anymore. Uh, and yeah, whatever, yeah. And I got a bunch of pretty much any movie they've done a riff tracks of that I don't already own is on my list, and that's about it for that. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys all have a great Christmas, and I hope you enjoy your gift from me and Bobo, which is going to be a lot of don't look as good as I'd like them to, but hopefully the commentary will make up for it. DW7 videos. Um, the last item to discuss. Oh, you know what? I should also discuss something else before this last item. And that is the fact that um, people have... At least one person mentioned... Sometimes I say people, and it's just one comment that stuck with me. Uh, somebody mentioned that we should really get a third person and do a Let's Play all together, even though it's only a one-player game. Because we've done it before with uh, on Bobo's channel. I came over to his place once and recorded some stuff with Red. And I'd love to get together and record some stuff for Smash sometime, but I haven't actually met Smash. Um, but it's been suggested, hey, you guys... Um, should do three people passing one controller around to play um, the shoe story mode. And this is because of the epic, you know, Brotherhood of Three uh, preview video I did with, like, the, the, the Peach Garden Brothers, uh, you know, what you're going to do, Tao Tao, what you're going to do. And I, I like that people got into the spirit of it, but it would probably really make that much sense to have three people passing around the controller on a one-player game. I don't know uh, if it makes any more or less sense than two people passing around the controller. But... Um, we, Bobo and I are planning, and I'm, I shouldn't really say very much about this because it's it's all subject to change. We are going to try to do an LP with the two of us and a third person, uh, and it's an actual um, an actual. It would be a network LP, I think. I don't think we'd be able to do it in person. Um, <laughs> That, that would actually be a bit of a stretch, but yeah, what it actually is a plan for us to try to do uh, a. It would be a pretty long game, too. It would be a pretty big LP, uh, comparable to the LPs together of, like, The Warriors or Psych and Densetsu 3, like a pretty long LP uh, together. Um, but right now, nothing is for sure on it yet. Um, there's been various experiments with whether or not it would be able to be recorded, and since I think it would have to be done via the interwebs and not all in person, which up to and including Bobo and I not necessarily getting together in the same room to record, even though we'd have the option. Um, then we have to, I've never bothered to download chat client stuff for any of the computers I've got now, so there's a lot of technical issues need to be resolved first. But uh, keep in mind that the excitement of uh, 
three people doing an LP together. Uh, it won't be Dynasty Warriors themed, but we might be able to grant your wish in a way. The thing standing in the way of that, possibly, uh, and the thing that's really going to interfere with any LP togethers with Bobo, I have, and this is the last piece of news before I finally just play a game, I have actually uh, applied for a position that would have me doing a three-year tour, uh, three-year minimum, possible to extend up to five years in Germany. This would be a great opportunity for me. I'm not really making more money, uh, but they would pay for they they give me a housing allowance so basically uh i would get a promotion in the form of housing expenses would become money that i'd get to save uh for me it would be awesome because i'd be in europe and i could like visit all different places in europe it would be really cool i just think it would be a lot of fun kind of wish it was like two years with an option for three or one year with an option for three rather than three with an option for five but you know excuse me you gotta do what you got to do you got to take the chances that are offered and now i've thrown this out there and um it's not at all certain that i'll get it um and i might in fact go into work tomorrow and i haven't had access to work email for a couple of days uh, i might go into work tomorrow and find out that i didn't have it in which case i just told the internet webs hey i think i'm going to germany and then immediately find out it's not true but obviously that would have a big impact on my ability to do lp togethers with anybody uh, i would at least from germany be able to upload my own stuff uh so it wouldn't be like with bobo uploading my stuff a week after i recorded it because it takes me a week to get him a bunch of seven zip files but yeah so hopefully that'll happen i just it's been on my mind to the point where i figured i should mention it in my video somewhere okay now let's play an actual game before we just end the video You've been waiting long enough. I think you deserve to see some footage of sexy wrestling chicks. And if uh, you're a girl um, and you don't want to see this, or if you're a guy who doesn't want to see this, and hey, you might be a girl who does want to see this, I don't know. Um, you can tune out now. I'm just going to play a little bit of Rumble, very little bit of Rumble Roses, and then I'm calling it a video. It might not be as, as much fun. It probably won't even be as much fun as last time when Bobo and I were together playing as a tag team of a bear and a clown. <laughs> I doubt it'll be anywhere near that zany. There's really only one thing I wanted to show you guys. And the sound is like too freaking loud, really. I need to actually take a second to turn down the speakers. Got a convoluted setup here to be able to play sound on this thing while capturing. I have speakers plugged into the computer. Can't plug my headphones into that computer, which means I can't listen to it on the headphones because of a problem with the jacks on my... Blah. It's just... There's a complicated setup here. I'm going to load the game. I'm going to hard drive. Very appropriate when you're playing this game. Hoo -hoo. Switch over to the BBD here. BBD is completely awesome with their like, underwear and stuff. However, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to play as Superstar, the Black Belt Demon. Rumble Roses Double X features superstar versions of all the characters. And the uh, big difference really is they get different entrance movies, different entrance songs. They actually have different movesets. The way the superstars work is that you, um, if you have a certain popularity, you have to get their popularity level up, which basically means winning matches and not losing. For some reason, it takes longer with the heels than it does with the faces, but I've never figured out exactly how it works. But if you win a bunch of matches and you don't lose, uh, your popularity will eventually get up to 100. If you win a title, it will go straight to 100. And if you just never lose, or you load after you lose, you get to a point where all of your characters have 100 popularity, which makes it kind of meaningless. But uh, you can then use superstar versions of the characters instead of the regular versions. They have different move sets. In BBD's case, I think her outfit is less sexy. Her superstar outfit. Generally, the superstar outfits kind of look stupid. Um, Eigel, for example, has a superstar outfit where she's dressed in like a, a lamb costume, which is really silly. And then, as Great Khan, she's in like a little furry wolf costume, which is even sillier. But the creepier one is the lamb costume, because the wolf costume is probably just, well, we made uh, her face form have a superstar lamb costume. I guess the, her heels should just have a wolf. That's like the opposite. But the lamb is obviously where it started, which means somebody was trying to think of an alternate costume for Eichel that would be sexy and hot, and decided to dress her as a farm animal. Anyway, 
Yeah, so generally the superstar outfits are retarded, but in BBDs, it's not retarded. It's not as revealing as your regular outfit. It's some kind of weird Geisha make, m Miko thing. And typically in any kind of RPG, if you have a female character and you can equip a piece of armor, like in her case, as a superstar, I think she's she may or may not have you know, deal more damage, take less damage. I'm not sure. Her move set is slightly different. The superstars are supposed to be more powerful than the regular version somehow. And if you're playing an RPG and you've got a female or a male character, I suppose, and you can equip them with a piece of armor that actually boosts their stats and makes them more effective, but there's something else that makes them look sexier, you really ought to give them the better equipment and not just make them go around looking sexy. But in Rumble Roses... I mean, the whole frickin' point of the game is supposed to be titillation. Yeah, there's regular BBD. So we're going to go ahead and play a uh, Superstar BBD, basically because I promised you that I would play a little Rumble Roses, and also because I want you to see her entrance, because her entrance is frickin' awesome. That's actually probably a really good match for BBD, because it's really very unlikely I would lose that one. It's not likely I'd lose any of them, but... Losing a Humiliation-only match against... Uh, Sergeant Clement's not going to happen. Well, this would be... No, this is no good. As much as I love the uh, Naughty Empire, um, I want to see BBD's single introduction. I don't even know I'm looking at this one. I wouldn't be able to see her intro. So we want to go back over here, and um, we'll watch... Uh, we'll just have a quick match of BBD versus Sergeant Clements. And you can watch BBD's entrance, which is awesome. And ridiculous. Because that's what Rumble Roses Double X is. It's awesome and ridiculous. From Japan, Black Gaisa Girl, the Black Belt Demon! I don't think I've showcased this on a previous video. I'm pretty sure I showcased regular Black Belt Demon's intro. I just don't get what this is about. I don't want to offend Egregious Bass by calling this death metal, but this sounds like what death metal is supposed to be to me. It's just kind of people growling and being weird. And she has little creepy girls with her. And she just does these poses, and they're not particularly sexy. They're just some kind of weird traditional posy poses. And she has little girls who are standing there looking creepy. It's got like this, it's got this like creepy possessed Maiko girl from Inuyasha vibe going. And death metal. I, just, I don't get what's going on with that intro at all. I just really like it. Sergeant Clement's uh, intro is, yeah, we might as well watch it. It's ridiculous, of course. But like Sergeant Clement's, like the entire game. She's one of the more ridiculous characters in a game that's full of ridiculous characters. She's a stripper with a cop gimmick. That's a real thing that exists in the world of, like, sexy archetypes. And yet in the story mode for Rumble Roses, she seems to think she's a real cop. She doesn't seem to understand that real cops don't do this. <laughs> At least in this game, her intro is actually her dancing like a stripper. It's like they've accepted the fact that she has a stripper gimmick and is not, you know... She doesn't think she's a cop. <laughs> She does not go around trying to arrest people for the crime of, as I recall from Rumble Roses, whatever. <laughs> Speeding, murder, whatever. <laughs> yeah, the blonde bombshell is like, not my favorite like hot chick archetype ever, but Sergeant Clements is actually pretty hilarious. I love the, uh, the sunglasses, too. Sadly, neither of them are the singles champion, so neither of them got to pose with the belt afterwards. That must mean it's must be Rowdy Reiko. I have no idea who I left as a singles champion. I think Rowdy Reiko was the singles champion the last time I played, and the Naughty Empire probably the tag champions. So anyways, I guess I'll steal her weapon, even though BBD doesn't need a weapon to make you tap. Probably just going to slow things down. Uh, or I could just get my butt kicked. I haven't played in a long time. I think I'm hitting the wrong button to block, actually. 
And I don't remember, like, her mo like you can get any character to tap in 45 seconds to a minute if you know how to use Black Belt Demon right. And her superstar mode should be even faster. Her superstar form should be even faster. But I don't remember the moves. If you concentrate on one body part with her, you can get somebody to tap in, like, 45 seconds. I'm not even kidding. I'm certainly not showing you the ideal uh, superstar Makoto match here. I think, uh, yeah. She might even be... BBD uh, non-superstar mode might even be a little bit better because I think that the move I just did that was an arm submission, as regular BBD, I think it's a head submission that also builds up the humiliation meter, and her humiliation finisher is a head submission. So basically, that's how you get somebody to tap in 45 seconds. You build up the humiliation meter with a move that damages the part of the body that um, you need to finish off with the humiliation move. So, yeah. Get out of the ring so I can pose for the people. What did she say? It was sultry as hell, whatever it was. <laughs> Alright, so I'm way out of practice. It's probably just as well that I'm in a match I can't possibly lose. Um, because the computer just isn't good at focusing on damaging the part of your body that it needs to to win a PHM match. So typically, if I let her get a submission, she's she can win because I only need to get hit, or not a submission, a finisher. The computer can win because it only needs to hit you with a finisher once to finish you off. Even though I tend to build up like five finishers and just keep letting the match go. So yeah, I'd be in real trouble here, but uh, the rules of the match are going to make it so that I'm fine. As Geisha Girl versus Stripper Cop, the ultimate battle. I believe I still have the same finishers, which means that it's still a head submission to actually win this match. When it's like a... Ooh! That is some serious heel smack talk right there. I'm planning my vacation as I fight you! <laughs> that all can't run. Yeah, I'm really not doing that well here at all. God, I just kind of ran at her and did a belly flop in midair. Okay, I'm doing horribly here. It wasn't even a brain buster. How's this going to be a brain buster? It's just a delayed vertical. It's not as cool. <laughs> I love that. Alright, get out of the ring. I want to taunt. I don't really understand what she's saying there. I, I can't... I can't block at all. I'm supposed to be able to counter grapples. I'm just not doing it ever. Oh, well. <laughs> I probably should not just taunt right next to her. Uh, I get kicked in the face. See, I always wonder what BBD is saying, but and part of what is so cool is that she's really soft-spoken in all of her taunts. But it does mean that I have a hard time understanding what the hell she's saying. Instead of screaming stuff, she's just kind of like chuckles at her opponents like a clown chuckles a clown yeah pretty much nice power tackle from the small Japanese girl on the giant American Amazon so yeah I'm doing a really inefficient job of it here but um 
I am going to win this almost certainly because uh, the computer just doesn't have the focus to keep attacking one body part. And it needs to get you humiliated and then use a humiliation KO, which means that for each character, there's one part of the body that you have to damage enough to win because they've got to use this humiliation submission to win, and the humiliation submission will only damage. That's an interesting camera angle. Thank you, game. Humiliation submission will only hit that one part of the body. So, like, if you can you can damage her legs all day long, but if your humiliation submission move hits the head, then you're just not going to win that way. Ow. Damn it. I, I might literally be hitting the wrong button to block. I don't think I've blocked successfully yet. There's a little confusion about the layers of her clothing there. That was a very weird-looking attack, Makoto. Belly bounce. She should have, like, a move where she steps on the leg, and that really... Damn it. She's blocking everything. I can't block at all. Can't, however, do that goofy-looking running attack. Yeah, I'm actually liking, uh, from my memory, because I haven't played much recently, I seem to like Black Belt Demon better than her superstar move set anyway. See, she has two finishers. She didn't even try her humiliation KO. And now she can't because I'm not humiliated anymore. The computer just doesn't know how to win these matches. Woo. Big woo. No more, mirth. no more mirth. Are you ending fun around the world? Hey, play with the camera. Yay. And there's a little explosion of energy out of their crotch as she blocks my attack. I, th I think um, she needs to get me to submit by damaging the body. I need to get her to submit with the head. I think she needs to get me to submit by damaging the body. Which means that like what she's doing now is kind of a waste. Although, this is good because it builds her humiliation meter. I'm just really not doing a good job at all. But I still love that attack. Damn it, stay down for once. What? No, I didn't mean to do that. What? Why would you do that? That's what I meant to do. That's not really helping much. I'm just damaging the legs for funsies. Now this match has gone on long enough, I kind of want to damage every part of her body, but poor BBD just doesn't look that impressive anymore because she's in the, like, I am devastated, hunkering down pose. That's the move I want to do. BBD has that. Superstar BBD doesn't seem to have that. Ah, uh, sucks. Oh, let's do a finisher for fun. Wow, this is actually a lot harder than I was expecting. Because BBD doesn't... I'm not finding a lot of moves that damage the head. I'm sure that there are some, I just haven't found them. Oh, there's a body submission. That looks like an arm bar to me. Oh, arm. 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 Okay, it said, I thought it said body. See, I would have won there if this wasn't an HKO match. Then again, if this wasn't an HKO match, she would have already hit me with a regular finisher. She's been holding them in reserve. So she should be hurt now. And once again, I can't block. I, I'm i pretty sure this is the right button for blocking. Okay, it is. I've just apparently got the timing completely wrong. And 
it doesn't help that everything I do is getting blocked. So this is turning into a marathon match. I was not expecting that. I was talking about how you can win in 45 seconds with BBD. Not happening so much here. And here's a convoluted arm submission. So the arm and the head are both ready to go. I haven't damaged her legs much. Ah, now the body submission. And this will also build up the humiliation meter nicely. So really the legs are the only thing that isn't in the red. And BBD normally is great at crippling the legs. The legs and the head she can take out fast. But, I don't know, superstar mode, I just don't know her moveset. I'm sorry, BBD, I'm letting you down. I'm making you look bad. I mean, I'm technically winning, just not by as much as I feel like I should. <laughs> Yeah, the body, the arms, and the head are all to the point where I could get under normal match rules. I could make her submit. So I just need to finish off the legs. What are you doing? Get over there. Yeah, she didn't have any. Didn't have a lot of submissions down there. She regular old BBD has a move where she steps on your leg in such a way that it gets hit twice. It's kind of weird, and she does builds up your humiliation meter. I hear at least it's a leg submission. Damn it. Well, I'm going to have a full humiliation meter again. With four HKO, or four finishers saved up, she might actually be able to do something here. I need to get out of the ring. At least until I can get in here. And oh, this is an arm submission, though. See, this is goofy as hell. Trying to get a camera view so we can see what's going on as opposed to just everyone's, you know, naughty bits. Right Alright, so I got her to blow one of her finishers by countering mine, which the computer doesn't do that often. It really seems to be dedicated to winning this. This time it didn't. I was actually hoping it would do the same thing. That's ridiculous. The weaker the dog, the more it bucks. You just try to behave. You just try and behave? A big softy, I heard. Trying to get her to say, maybe I'll go on a journey again. What a racket. The weaker the dog, the more it bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep running up to me, getting hit with the finisher, and then I'll taunt some more. That's it. That's what we're waiting for. Now I'll try to damage that leg one more time. Not like that. Eh, forget it. I'm sick of attacking the arm. Yeah, it's gotta be a leg submission. So, well, I think I'll have now gotten her to the point where she 
I think she would have submitted there, or just about. Didn't really mean to do that. And she has these huge, crazy bathhouse shoes on. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting look for a pro wrestler. <laughs> Yay, I finally countered something. Did that humiliate her? Not quite. This should. Or maybe not. That was pretty embarrassing, I guess. Sort of. Alright, finally we're going to end this thing. After taunting. And I've got it where it's like completely impossible for us to get an angle where you can see what's going on, but uh, she's kind of sort of pulling. It looks like a full Nelson to me, but whatever, it's going to win the match. Who will win the match? <laughs> Something unintelligible. <laughs> So there you go, folks. Uh, I'm sorry that took much longer than it should have. But hey, as a result, the uh, talkie part of the video wasn't three times as long as the uh, gameplay part. Um, now I do feel kind of obligated, though, to go back and show you how quickly, uh, since I didn't know BBD Superstar's moveset and I just got confused, and I timed the defense, the blocking, and everything all wrong. I think I'll just quick show you, even though you've already seen her intro in another video. I will show you um, non-superstar BBD in, uh, I won't put it on PHM rules, I won't bother with that, but I'll show you how quickly she can make somebody submit, hopefully. Maybe I'm just setting myself for failure here, but... Oh, another PHM match, perfect. So she's got on a somewhat more revealing but less intricate outfit and this will magically make her able to make people submit faster. And she still has awesome generic rock music. <laughs> and an affinity for bears. Or rather bears have an affinity for her. Or maybe they don't have an affinity for each other at all. He's like, oh look, a bear. A brown bear. I've heard they're the most dangerous kind. Somewhat more aggressive than black bears or grizzlies. Hmm. How interesting. Maybe I'll go on a journey to bear country. And I won't put my food up in plastic bags overnight. Just because I want bears to attack me. <laughs> That's how fearless she is, folks. Picking a fight with a bear. What you don't know here is that she actually was camping, and she intentionally left food out on the ground to attract this bear. She was camping here in the arena, of course. Ah, uh, Makoto. The love of my life, the fictional Japanese girl who would appear to weigh about 90 pounds considering how much body fat she has. And supernova of flavor. <laughs> toad flavor. I don't get the thing with toads and ninjas. Or if it's even toads and ninjas. Like uh, Senryo Kyoshiro, the um, weird uh, dancing pixie. Now what is he? He's, um, it's that form of theater. I went and saw it while I was in Japan. Uh, kabuki. Yeah, he's like a kabuki performer. And for some reason that involves him in Samurai Showdown 3 at least. Having an attack that involves a giant frog that eats you. Which, uh, Benakage has an attack like that in this game, and, um, I will do my level best to make sure you don't see it, because I intend to try to win this in under a minute. Now that I've said that, I almost certainly won't. I certainly did a horrible job in that last match. It went way longer than I meant it to. But, you know, once you've failed to win in record time, all pressure to do things quickly is off, and you just kind of play around with the game. Because 
this game remains. Um, it's a guilty pleasure, obviously. This game's actually a lot of fun. No story mode, no real objective, other than to just keep doing meaningless, silly ladies wrestling matches. Okay. There we go. She got out of that pretty quickly. And she, uh, she's the worst person to go against. She has really high evade. If I was going to make good on my boast of winning in less than a minute, she's probably the worst character I could be going up against. Because my time is halfway up, and I don't think she's halfway to being ready to submit. Although, it could still happen here. It's still possible. Luckily, time freezes during this little moment. It doesn't freeze for this animation, though. Time's running out, BBD. Hurry up! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, Benakage won the Can You Last for One Minute in the Ring with the Black Belt Demon Challenge. She won with an additional six seconds. Congratulations, Benakage. You made me a liar. However, I think I've proven, if nothing else, and I know that the whole world was waiting with bated breath for the answer to this question, is Mysterious JG more effective with the Black Belt Demon or with Super Mode Black Belt Demon? Well, we've got our answer to that one. Anyway, folks, that's it for uh, this video. This was Mysterious JG talking for about an hour about the status of his channel where it's going in the future. I forgot to thank the fans. Thank you, fans, for tuning in and watching and continuing to watch from um, you know, when I was in Afghanistan and it was more difficult to update. Hope you guys will stick with me for the future LPs. Hope you guys will go check out some of the old LPs. If you're a new viewer to the channel, um, check out some of the stuff I did before you got here. It remains, in my opinion at least, pretty good. And um, I hope that the video quality for this wasn't too low because I've been kind of disappointed with... Uh, Again, comparing it to Final Fantasy X, we'll see. Maybe the first thing I'll do with my super new capture setup when I get it is to check out this game again. At any rate, folks, this is Mysterious JG um, showcasing some BBD and talking about some channel stuff. Hope you guys, if I don't do a video like this before Christmas comes, which I probably won't, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and uh, keep rocking, baby. Bye-bye.